We all here today because we woke up today. And um, as I celebrate this moment with my family, my friends, my fellow industry brothers and sisters, I just want to say to the hip hop legends in the room, y'all could have been anywhere tonight, but y'all are here. Salute to all of you, your 50th anniversary. There's so many people, I don't want to say names because I know how that feel when you get overlooked and none of you should feel ever overlooked. Your contribution is felt. We all know who you are and we're just proud to be here to celebrate your 50th and my 40th. <laughs> and why are you two standing over here? Come over here. So listen, this is just a few of the key players that are a part of this story. Um, that helped me bring this vision to life. When I saw the Black Godfather with Clarence Savon, I was wondering why no one didn't give me a call. Um, I worked up on him and my Godfather, Gerald, the only one in Motown, 20 years old, sponging all that wisdom. And when I saw his story, I said, damn, I just wanted one question. Cause it was just so inspiring, it was so dope and it was so real, and now he's gone. And that was one of the voices that could put out a fire, set you straight, fix your deal, and send you right down the right path. So I just wanna take a few seconds, just a little moment of silence for the Godfather, Mr. Clarence Savon. And on that evening, we were filming in Boston at the park, and all the damn lights went out. So we got on the phone and we called the city, we got the bad line. And 20 minutes later, whew, the park lights came on. And we said, let's get it in, let's get it out. And then that one question, they said, who am I? And I don't speak in third party. And I let it all out. It was in me for like 35 years, a little bit of the pain, a little bit of the fun, and a little bit of how I would like to see myself when I do sit down and say, you know, can't do that poison move no more, Ryan. <laughs> you know, I can't fix your jacket, Bob. The night is over. You know, or me and Ricky battling over who's going to go clothing shopping. So we just um, started that journey from that moment and things got better. And I couldn't think of anyone to film it because a lot of the people I want to work with didn't return my call even people I worked with. So I found a gentleman who was recommended to me named Jason Zucker. And um, he called himself Jay-Z. He's a little lighter than the real Jay-Z. <laughs> but um, he killed it. He helped me understand how to do this. We was in the room for almost six months just looking at footage and trying to tell a story without a blueprint. And I thought we did a, a damn good job putting footage together, things you've never seen that I had in the archives. And I don't know where he is, but please stand up for a second, Jay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for returning my email. And I'll never forget what you said. Who are you? I said, I'm Michael Bivens. It's nice to meet you, man. <laughs> and, um, we watched DJ Khaled. We watched a lot of people who, who we call maestros get it. And my wife said, baby, you could do it. Step on out. If they could do it, you could do it. So I took the position as a young Michael Scorsese and the cool Quincy Jones. And thank you, baby, for putting that battery in my pack. I appreciate that. And in closing, this is uh, my teacher in film, Mr. Inge Fish Grease Members, y'all. <laughs> this is one of the EPs. My wife is an EP. This gentleman I met years ago from DC. It's my music supervisor. This is my Dr. Dre, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Rico Anderson. 
This guy right here is from the streets of Boston. It's just like my man. Take care of me when I'm moving. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Travis Bogle. <laughs> I got way more shout outs and I know we gotta get to it, but I just wanna say to Miss Yvonne McNair, you um you organized this for me and you showed me how to do this here. You're a hell of a producer, hell of a marketing company. Thank you for getting that deal for me. Cause we knew what we was going through to get this signed. And you made a call. And it was one of the best deals I ever did in 40 years. Wow. All right? Cause you know what? We own it. Yeah. All right? Thank you. And last but not least, no, no, second to last, ladies and gentlemen, the man I keeps new addition in BBD rocking out the concert, DJ Shot Panel. I say, yo, come on back home and put your hands on them wheels and steels, man. And you always there, call away, brother. Like you said, talk that ish. Talk that ish, man. And last but not least, you know, the man that pulled me out of rehearsal one day. And, um, you know, I probably was over there messing up, you know. So it was cool to get off the floor. It was too difficult anyways. And he said, come here, man. Y'all's record went number one. And we was like, where? He was like, London. We was like, oh, okay. So we gonna go back to practice. No one celebrated. We didn't understand the magnitude of what Candy Girl did. And he said, there's a, what was it? What's the thing in there, BC, P, B? See, that's enough, that's that international stuff. <laughs> Hot 97, there we go. He said, there's an interview, you guys gotta talk. And then he said, you know, come here, Mike. You gotta do this interview. So I'm shaking, like, what do you mean, do the interview? He said, talk. I said, okay, what do I say? Talk the way you talk when you go to school with those white people. <laughs> Be smart. I said, okay, so use big words? He said, no, just be smart. And this is real truth. So he handed me the phone and he said, do what you do. And I just wanted to tell you that day, I didn't know what I meant. I didn't know who I was with the rest of those talented four guys. But when you told me I was the spokesperson, you gave me a job. And I hope I made you proud. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, please, if you will, give it up for the seventh member of New Edition, the Godfather, Mr. Brooke Penny. All right, and in closing, my baby just turned 16. All right. She is the young CEO of Sporty Rich. She tells me records are whack and outfits are whack and it's, it hurts my heart. <laughs> but it's something in her that she got from her mother and I and I just want to say, baby, what was that kid's name, J.I. the Prince? Yeah, she said, find this kid, J.I. the Prince. That's, that's her hip hop flavor. And I, I thought you had a beautiful birthday and I hope you take this seat one day and sign some artists that you like and um, take the reins because daddy could use the help. All right? And to my beautiful daughter, Shyla, daddy loves you. You probably dance better than a lot of people I know, even your daddy. And um, just keep getting busy, baby. That's all I say. And to Starla, my fashionista, Sephora, here we come. And to Nine Nine, Everybody loves Nai Nai. <laughs> Nai Nai, daddy loves you. And um, like he said, daddy, just be fly and have a good time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we're gonna close this mic and take you on the journey. This is my directorial debut. I hope you like it. Some of y'all in this room are in it. And um, this is it, baby. August 24th, we blast off all black TV. And a month from there, we go to Linear TV. See, Brooke, I learned that too. <laughs> That's the regular stuff, not the streaming. And then I think it's like Roku, YouTube TV, Amazon, you know, all the good stuff we got on our phone, and that's the 24th. Please tell a friend and a friend, and I'm 
Let's get down. Hip Hop 50th, New Edition 40th. Ladies and gentlemen, the hustle. Mike Bibb. Yeah.